Friday night, I spent time talking with a young creationist who flat out stated that evolution was as much of a religion as any other, and that just like other religions, there wasn't any proof it was right. And he should know because he'd done research. He said he just couldn't believe that humans were descended from monkeys, and that everything in the universe came from nothing or from some big bang. Again, he'd done the research, and there was just no conclusive evidence of these assertions. He believed that we came directly from a divine creator, we were made in his image, and that even if the some big bang theory was true, there had to be a creator to get it all started, to snap his fingers and say, let there be light. Oh, this creation has claimed to have done a lot of research into evolution, global warming, likely a hoax, and religion, but he still had the sort of muzzy-headed thinking that comes from not knowing how to think critically. All the research in the world does one no good if one doesn't know how to interpret it correctly and draw logical conclusions from it. This creationist claimed he'd never had any formal schooling, no kindergarten, elementary school, etc., and that he was largely self-taught. And while this was admirable, it drove home to me the fact that people need to be taught to think critically. This is not something that comes naturally to humans, and without it, we're liable to fall prey to any scam, and in this young man's case, it was Christianity, that comes along. He may have thought exhaustively about these concerns, but I have real doubts that he ever really thought critically about them. The eye of his reason was only half open, if not less. But he was good-natured when, after much delving into his own beliefs, he inquired as to my own. When I responded that I'm an atheist, he asked why, and I served him his own answer back. There's just not any proof. He then claimed to also need proof and facts as well, yet in the same conversation said that no religion, including evolution, had enough to convince him. Now, I wanted to tell him that lack of proof or facts rarely stops the truly faithful among us and may in fact spur them on, but we were both very drunk and it seemed impolitic to start down that particular path. And I was far too buzzed to point out the differences between belief and knowledge, and that if one believes, one doesn't need knowledge, and if one has knowledge, one doesn't need belief. I probably passed up on a golden opportunity to plant the seed of doubt that might one day sprout into full-grown disbelief. But as drunk as I was, I doubt he'd have remembered or remarked our conversation for long enough to doubt himself or his beliefs. But I digress. This young man was, in the flesh, proof that an open, inquiring mind isn't enough to protect one against being taken in by false claims and pseudoscience. In fact, having a mind that's too open, so open that your brain falls out, to borrow from Richard Dawkins, is just as dangerous as having a mind that's closed. You'll fall for any pack of lies and fantasies that anyone or any book says, if you like the sound of it, and in your own ignorance, you'll like the most self-serving, ridiculous garbage that crosses your path. No amount of research and thinking will enlighten you if you're looking in the wrong place in the wrong way. Or even if you're looking in the right place, but you can't analyze what you've taken in and sort fact from fiction.